finding areas involving simple trig, log, and exponential functions. Previously, you've looked at all of the primitives listed here. So finding the primitives of sine, cos, and sec squared of the exponential. And if you had this type of expression here, where the top is the derivative of the bottom, we understood that that would give us a log function. So now you, you will be required to use any of these to calculate an area or to calculate a definite integral. All right, so there's not too much to show you here. You already know these primitives. Let's uh, let's just uh, list out a few gotchas, a few things to look out for. So, notes. So you really need to um, be super familiar with the exact values of the trig functions. So I don't know how you do it, but I use these little triangles. That's terrible. One, root two. That happens to be one as well. Round four. And I could have one, two, root three. This guy's the bigger one, pi on three. This one's the smaller one, pi on six. And as well, try to keep in mind what the uh, what the trig functions look like. So I'm trying to draw cos here. That's... So it's minus one at pi, for example. It's one minus one. Two pi. You get the idea. Uh, so keep keep those kinds of things in mind as well. So you can hit the exact values at zero, pi on two, pi three, pi on four, etc. Um, secondly, as has been mentioned before, try to exploit symmetry wherever you can. So, for example, uh, evenness, it's an even function, or oddness. Also, um, it could be if I'm asked to find the area, oops, oops. Should really label my miniature axes. If I'm asked to find, say this is sine, just pretend that's symmetrical. If I'm asked to find this particular area, then I could use the trick that the area is twice the integral from naught to pi of sine x dx, exploiting the fact that those, those two things are equal. Uh, next point, you're not expected to, um, this has been mentioned before, so integration of y equals log x by considering x equals e to the y, changing the subject, uh, is not in the syllabus. Uh, 
that's not in the New South Wales two unit syllabus. And also, there's another trick integration of the same thing, so a log function. Integration of a log function by leading the student. By leading the student through, which is essentially, it, it'll be a derivation, but by leading through the derivation of by leading the student through the derivation of oops. integration by parts is not in the syllabus. Uh, so I could have just said integration of logs are not in the syllabus. However, you do see this second technique sometimes in three unit trial HSEs and apparently I've been told it appeared in HSEs long ago, uh, but it sometimes pops up in a trial paper. So you'll be given a product, asked to, to derive, uh, to take the derivative of it using the product rule, and then rearrange the thing, and uh, uh, which that then allows you to answer part B of the question, which will be to integrate a log or something containing a log. Uh, this is how integration by parts works. This is how you derive integration by parts. You have u and v, and then you differentiate them using the product rule, switch it around a bit, and voila, you've got the integration by parts formula. Uh, so this is not in the syllabus. Uh, you may see it in the textbook. Definitely not in the syllabus. So what, what point was I making? So this is sometimes uh, seen in three unit. That's the next course up, trial exams. And integration by part itself itself is Point mathematics extension two, the next course up again. So definitely not within the scope of of this of this course. All right, so some examples. I might have to start on the next page. Maybe just to neaten things up a bit. I might just squeeze that down. I've accidentally got the Y. iPad won't highlight all these things for me. That's strange. I'll, I'll bring the Y back. Mm -hmm. Oops. Please move. Ta da. All right. So some examples. Uh, again, could be any of these things. I'm just going to pick a couple. I want this one for starters. So that was a sine function. So example one, find the area bound by the x-axis and 
y equals the sine of x from 0 to uh, should be a little more explicit from x equals 0 to pi, say. So that's what this thing looks like. And so the area that we are after is this one. Pi is 3.14. Yes, that's what this thing represents. And it goes up to 1. So the area from naught to pi of sine x dx, and I show you these because trig is beautiful. Trig is so beautiful. <laughs> if I integrate sine, I get minus cosine from naught up to pi. Take that minus sign at the front because it confuses me. Cos of pi is minus 1. Back here, back here, back here. Cos of pi is minus 1. It's right there. Minus 1. And the cos of 0 is 1. Again, just to drive the point home, 1. Uh, minus 1 outside of minus 1 minus another one is minus 2, so this equals 2. 2. Right, so this funny looking shape area here uh, is exactly 2. How wonderful is that? Okay. Try and make things a little. Oops. Nope, I had it right the first time. I have the space. Let me use it. I've missed the square. I've missed the eye. This is being far too fussy. I'm wasting everybody's time and bandwidth. <laughs> oh, what happened? Come on. There we go. And I can't scroll the page anymore. Oh, iPad has screwed up. Let me switch documents and back again. I can scroll again. Thank you. Okay. Uh, example two. Find the area bound by the x-axis and y equals sec squared. Again, another beautiful trig function, sec squared from x equals, let me have a look. This is the one here. Copy. There we go. Tab, tab, tab. So that is less than one. So that's pi on four. From minus pi on four to pi on four. So the area I'm after in this case is this one. All right, let's give this a spin. Uh, now, I have this example here because I can use the symmetry of the situation. This obviously is the same as this part over there. So I can just find this one and multiply it by two. So the area will be equal to two times the integral from naught to pi on four of, sec squared x dx. Uh, two. Uh, integration, uh, when you, the uh, primitive of that is 10, not 
to pi on 4. The tan of pi on 4, where's my little triangle, is pi on 4. Tan is 1 on 1, which is 1. So it's 2 times, oops, 1 minus the tan of 0. And in your mind, make sure you've got what these things look like. Tan of 0 is 0. So 2 times 1, so it's 2. Oh, and again, another beautiful result, 2. This awkward looking thing is 2. It's beautiful, amazing. All right, lovely, lovely, lovely. And lastly, my last example that I want to show you is you can have more than one graph involved, right? There might be multiple graphs, and so Again, exploit any symmetry that you can find. So this one is find the area bound by the x-axis. Oh, do I remember the constants? I think I had y equals e to the, I I had half. So I have two, two functions to consider, y equals that one and e to the, I wanted something symmetrical, so it's out the other side, and from x equals 2, and up to uh, minus 2, 2. And hopefully that's the same as I prepared earlier. Click there, copy there, click there, click, no. Come on, come on. There we are. Oh, and I might just fit it in the page. Nice. Go back to the pen. So the area that we're asked for is here. All right, so you'd think, okay, well, I've got to do this function, and then I've got to do this function. But of course, the problem's symmetrical. So just do the positive side, because positive is a little nicer and more predictable, and uh, and double it. So you'll find that area and double it to find that area. So the area then is twice the integral from naught, where am I going? To two, two, clearly, naught to two, of e to the half x dx, which is 2 times the integral. Now I have to divide by half, which is the same as multiplying by 2, and that doesn't change. Nothing can be simpler than exponentials. Now, this won't come out to be anything nice. I mean, I, I, nothing like 2. Uh, uh, this is two, uh, 2 into that little x there gives me 1, that's e to the 1, which is 2e, and then I've got a 0 into this thing, which means the whole thing becomes 1, that's 2 times 1 is 2, and there's not much more I can do with that, so that's 4 minus, no, that's not right, 4e minus 4 units, getting excited, units squared. All right, so there we have it. Three examples, typical of what you may be asked for. Again, uh, logs aren't in the syllabus. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. And super important that you are familiar with these and try to exploit any symmetry that you can. Usually substituting a zero in makes things much easier. In this case, it gave me a zero. In this case, it gave me an exponential to the power of zero, which becomes one. Multiplying by one is easy. So do try to make use of, of, these, of these tips wherever possible. 
Okay, well, that does it for this lesson. I am Keith Johnston. Thanks for watching.